Hey, welcome D-Lab everybody. Today, I received a giant box from UPS. This thing weighs 75 pounds and it's all the way from Wisconsin. So the question is, is what is in this giant box? Could it be a big old guitar amp? How about a big ham radio? Microwave oven? But it's from Wisconsin, so maybe it's a big block of cheese. I don't know, but I'm going to lift it up here, tip it on the bench. We're going to open up, see what's inside. All right, before I get it up on the main bench, go ahead and pop the lid. See if there's any surprises in the top that I should be aware of. This thing is really packed well. It's a lot of this fill type foam. Here's a little box. Okay. Well, that should give you a clue. We'll get to that in a minute. More foam. More foam. Lots more foam. Wow. Well, I know what it is, and it's a good thing I opened the top first because this thing is actually facing up. So let me now get it on the bench and we'll pull it out. So you're ready? I can tell you it's not cheese, but it did come from Wisconsin. And it was extremely well packed. Thank God. A beautiful Johnson Viking 2 with the matching VF122 VFO. A project for D-Lab. I'm going to open this up and give it a quick inspection. But it looks like it survived the trip. So luckily the guy packed the inside with bubble wrap. So none of the tubes ejected from their sockets. It really looks good inside. Everything is free to move that I can see. And bonus, this is a factory built unit. Should be a great one to get going again. All right, I'm getting ready to pull the bottom off, take a look inside. As you can see, there are some signs of modifications. Somebody soldered this pigtail onto the 120 volt crystal socket, so I'll have to replace that. So now, the moment of truth. What's under that bottom panel? Here we go. Pop that bottom panel. See what we got going on in here. So there are these additional leads that were coming out of the back of the radio. And it appears as though they had tied into the modulation section. And we got some real cool added on filter caps in here. But somebody did do a good job replacing the low voltage and negative bias caps. This is a factory wired unit, so it's going to be pretty easy to reverse all this and put this guy back to stock. All right, that's a wrap on the unboxing and initial inspection of the Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. I plan to have a series and we're going to walk through everything that's required to get this thing running and back on the air. Stay tuned.